Today we're going to uh, discuss how to perform an assessment on a client in acute care um, center, acute care facility. This is the assessment that you will do on a client that's in a the hospital, there is in the emergency room, there are in other places that are not just on long-term care facilities. You learn in 1115 how to perform a general survey and how to tailor it to the long-term care facility. So today we're going to kind of minimize a little bit of that, uh, well, that information that you got picked out the most important aspects of each system, and then we're gonna go from there according to the patient's history and medical diagnosis. Um, the, the way we perform a focus assessment is gonna be from head to tail, and we're just going to group it by systems. So we're gonna go from neurological to respiratory to cardiovascular to um, GI to GU, and then the last one is going to be skin. And then on that, as you go through each of the systems, you're also going to pay special attention to, um, to the skin and, the, and how the patient looks. I'm going to give you a description of a thorough assessment um, when a patient, and then I'm going to demonstrate how to do that so you have a visual for that. When we're looking at the neurological system, we're going to um, pay attention to um, um, more specific medical history on the client. And where do you get that information? You get that information, one, from the nurse's report. The nurse is going to give you a report when you come on duty. Then you're going to look at the patient's medical history or the history and physical paperwork, the one that the physician completed when the patient was admitted. That's going to give you a lot of information about past medical history, social history, psych history, patient's medications, um, past hospitalizations, and any other information that you will need in order to care for this client and to tailor that care to their specific needs. Um, so once you have that information, it kind of gives you um, a, a picture, so to speak, um, a snapshot of what the patient what you expect to see on the client uh, when you get into the patient's room. And then you're going to add that into the, um, the main complaint, why the patient was admitted to the hospital and what's been going on with the client. So when we go into the neurological, um, you learn in 1115 that you do all the different um, assessment of the different cranial nerves and you check um, the, the muscle strength and um, equality and all those things. When we come into acute care, we concentrate on the things that we know um, that will be essential for the system to function. For example, you look at the pupillary response, so you have a pain line and you assess for that. Um, that is more so for the clients that are lethargic, uh, patients that are not able to um, to verbalize any information that you're asking them. Patients that are taking uh, narcotics medications or any other medication that will change that response. Um, also pay special attention to patients that have um, uh, glaucoma, cataract surgery, and so forth, because that's going to change what you find. And also would give you the indication that that's a normal finding, nothing, it's not nothing new that you will need to pay attention to. So basically what you come in and assess for the neurological system will be orientation. So when you come in a room and introduce yourself, the patient is gonna to talk to you if they're able to talk. And you'll be able to determine the patient knows what day it is, um, what time it is, what year, who's the president and so forth. Um, can they follow a conversation? Does they have appropriate responses and so forth? So that gives you a level of consciousness, it gives you an orientation and gives you an overall um, picture of how the neurological system is working. Then you're moving into the respiratory system. Um, in 1115, you learn how to assess breath sounds throughout both of the lungs. When you come into acute care, unless the patient has medical history that will change a normal pattern on the respiratory system or have a complaint that brought them to the hospital that has to do with the respiratory system, you will perform a general survey. So you listen to breath sounds in the arterial lobes and that's gonna give you any indication with any uh, secretion accumulation, any wheezing, um, any of those things that, that will give you any indication there's something wrong with the respiratory system. And then you come towards the back and and in, when, you, when you're going to assess patient's bed sounds, you got to take into consideration patient's mobility and patient's status. So for example, if the patient has surgery that will prevent them from sitting up, so you can be able to assess the, um, the respiratory, you need to make sure you have an assistant to help you to turn the patient in a proper manner so you're able to assess that. Um, it is not appropriate for you to say, 
Um, I didn't turn the patient, the patient was in pain, I didn't assess the respiratory system. You need to make sure that you address it and you assess it in any way possible, meaning giving patient pain medication, give them some time so they can um, have the medication kicked in and then you can move them. Um, if the patient has any um, surgery, back surgery or anything like that, how much um, movement you can do and what kind of um, technique you need to use to move them. But the point I want to make is that you must assess every system in um, some way. Then on the back, just remember that on the left side you only have two lobes and on the right side you have three. So you want to make sure that you listen to the upper lobes, the middle lobe on the right, the lower lobe on the left and on the right. And that gives you some indication um, about the respiratory system. At the same time, you will be assessing the respiratory rate, the respiratory depth, color, um, any signs of hypoxia, such as um, uh, confusion, uh, lethargy, and inability to concentrate and answer your questions correctly. Um, and then if the patient is connected to an oxygen saturation machine, then you can see the numbers on the monitor and you can determine if that is a, no a normal number for the patient. Next system that we're gonna uh, talk about is the cardiovascular. On that, you're going to assess heart sounds and you're going to look at your landmarks. On the right side, you're going to look into um, the second in a costal space on the right sternal border, you're going to listen to the aortic uh, valve. Then right across from that on the second in a costal space on the left sternal border, you're going to listen to the first pulmonic. Then you go into the third in a costal space on the sternal border and you listen to the second pulmonic. The fourth in a costal on the left sternal border, then you're going to find your tricuspid valve. And then you come around into the fifth in a costal space, but this time you're going to look at midclavicular line right under the nipple. You're going to have to lift the breast for the women and you're going to listen to the mitral valve. In here, however, you're going to, on the other ones, you're going to listen to the lub dub. S1, S2. When you come down here into the uh, mitral valve, you want to ensure that you listen for a full minute and you pay attention to the rhythm. If it's regular, if it's irregular, if there's any extra beats in there, if it's not, and you want to make sure that you're making note of that. After you check for heart sounds, then you're going to look for pulses. And we'll learn in 1115 that we have many pulses, right? We have the temporal, the carotid, brachial, radial, ulnar, femoral, popliteal, dorsalis pedis down the feet and the posterior tibialis. When we're looking into doing an assessment on a client in acute care, you want to concentrate on the ones that would give you um, an idea of how the circulation is going in the extremity. And this time, then we will look at the radio and we'll do it, we check them both at the same time, and we compare to what the apical pulse um, sounded like when you listen to. You're also gonna look for edema in both extremities. You're gonna check for capillary refill, you're gonna check for color and you're gonna check for temperature. That's gonna give you an indication of the risk of the circulatory system. And as you're coming down, then you're going to be listening, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, palpating the, um, the pulses in the feet. And that's gonna give you an indication of how is the circulation in the whole leg. Again, you're gonna check the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibialis back in the back. And I'm gonna show you when we do the demonstration exactly what those places will be. And you do the same thing. You check for edema, color, temperature and capillary refill, okay? When it comes to GI, you're going to concentrate on the belly on the client. You're going to actually ensure privacy, of course. You are going to look at their bellies. You're gonna check for any distension, any discoloration, any scars that the clients already have in there. And then you're going to um, proceed to listen to bowel sounds. You want to make sure that you cover all four quadrants and you listen long enough to make a determination if they are normal, hypoactive, or hyperactive bowel sounds. And you'll learn a technique how to do that in 1115. Another um, item that we want to make sure we cover with the GI is ask the client what is their bowel habits? When was the last time they went to the bathroom? What was the color, consistency, frequency? Was there any blood in there? Um, was there any difficulty, any pain, discomfort when they went to the bathroom? That's important because it's gonna give you some idea of what the GI system is doing. If the patient is unable to talk to you, however, how are you gonna get that information? You want to make sure that you talk to your um, nursing assistant, that you look at your intake and output flow sheets as well as your um, ADL sheets. That's going to give you some information about the patient's bowel habits. 
Um, when it comes to GU, the same thing. We're going to ask the client how many times they go to the bathroom, what's the color, is there any odor, is there any blood, is there any cloudiness on, or, um, on the urine, and um, how often they go to the bathroom. If that information is not there, then you go through the other sheets that I already mentioned to look for that information. Um, another thing too is that if you know from the patient's medical history or with the um, chief complaint that brought them to the hospital that there's something related to the GU system, you want to make sure that you also do an assessment on that area and look for any, um, any openings, any sores or anything like that. Um, as we look around with uh, different systems, we will be also assessing their skin, and I mentioned color and temperature for the cardiovascular. Um, the same thing is when you are looking at the clients, especially for the GI and the GU, if they have any impairment that would not allow them to talk to you about um, what those uh, two systems are doing, then you want to make sure that you, if they have a, um, a diaper or a pen, that you open it up and you look at it, you roll them over to the side, you check their back and any uh, bony prominences that can cause pressure sores or pressure sites. So you want to make sure that you check all that so you can document and you can um, prevent any further deterioration of the skin. So um, basically that's how you will perform an assessment, a focus assessment on a patient. Remember that this is a system from head to toe. However, if you come into the patient's room and you ask them, for example, we'll come in and say, good morning, I'm Mr. Shapiro, my name is Sarah, I'm going to be your nurse today and I'm going to perform an assessment. I will check their armband. I will go ahead and ask them to state their name and I will proceed to do so. I will ask the question, how are you doing today? How was your night if I'm coming in the morning? And of course, they're going to start talking to you. Oh, last night, for example, I, you know, I had a little rough time sleeping um, and I, you will start engaging them in conversation. So why is that? If there is something that's bothering you, are you in pain? That will be the first question. What are you in pain? If they tell you yes, then you go straight into gathering more data about what the pain is and, and if they tell you well my belly hurts, but then you're going to concentrate on the GI system first, make sure that you gather all the data, take care of that complaint immediately and if it needs to be taken care of at that moment, you do so and then you follow, finish up your assessment after you have taken care of that complaint. If it's not it's something that it can wait, then you proceed to go from head to toe after you already have assessed that. If they tell you that they're having a little difficulty breathing, then you come to the respiratory system first. You make all those assessments, gather all that data, take care of the client at that moment if they need any more oxygen, if they need a nebulizer treatments or anything like that, and then you proceed to do the rest of the assessment. The point is that when you come into your client's room, not you, you cannot dismiss their their chief complaint or what they're telling you, you want to take care of that immediately. And then after that is taken care of, then you will continue to do your assessment and gather the, your data. Um, now I'm, we're just going to pause for a minute. I'm going to um, get um, ready so we can give you a demonstration about how to perform an assessment on a client in acute care. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to perform an assessment on a client in acute care. This is Mrs. Shapiro. Mrs. Shapiro is 84 years old. She came to the hospital with um, a diagnosis of acute stroke. She has a history of uh, cardiac issues. Um, I don't want to give you acronyms because I might throw you a little off, but um, cardiac history. She has also some um, history of asthma and uh, um, she has been um, otherwise just doing things on her own. So she came with um, different complaints of stroke and was actually having an acute stroke, was admitted to the intensive care unit where she was placed on uh, life support and eventually um, had a tracheostomy in place and she's unable to move her right side. Um, as I to do recall, as I was explaining, as you gather information from your client, then you get yourself prepared to what you're going to encounter when you go into that patient's room. So I know that Mrs. Shapiro cannot talk to me and that she cannot move her right side. Therefore, I'm going to make sure that I bring an assistant with me to help me turn her and help me perform this assessment so I can gather all my data. So I have Mrs. Svein here to help me with, um, with the assessment on this client. So I come into my patient's room, I knock on the door, 
I opened the door and I said, good morning, Mr. Shapiro. My name is Sarah. I'm going to be your nurse today and I'm going to perform an assessment. I understand that you are unable to speak, but you can actually follow commands and you can blink if I tell you one, yes, two, no, and then um, that you can do some commands as I ask you. So I'm going to talk to you as I do everything. One will be to relieve anxiety and fear on the client and two, to keep her informed of everything that I'm going to be doing. Okay. So Ms. Faye, you can help me. As you notice, both of the rails are up, but the lower ones are down because that's the hospital protocol. I'm going to make sure that the um, area, it's going to be comfortable for us to perform this assessment. We're gonna be turning this client back and forth. So you wanna make sure that your whole bed is at a working level for both of us. Now you want to make sure, and I will make a point that you have to put this bed all the way down again before you leave the patient's room. Then you want to make sure that you lower your rail so you can be closer to her and so is my assistant is going to do that when she um gets ready to do it okay so now remember that i talked about with neurological that you will look at your patient's medical history and you the pain it depends on that you're going to make a decision what you're going to do for mrs shapiro she is actually following me as i'm doing things but i want to make sure because of the medications that we have given her that her pupils are working properly so i will just tell her i'm going to remove her eyeglasses and I'm going to hold on to them and I'm going to put them back. Remember that especially her um, age, they're concerned about their belongings such as dentures and glasses. So you want to reassure them that the glasses are going to be put back on her face. So you want to make sure that you tell her, I'm going to shine a light in your eyes and it's going to come from the side. If you remember from 1115 and you just want to do a quick sweep because you want to see that reaction and they react normally. So we're going to put those back. And then I am going to, um, and to continue with my respiratory assessment. For the respiratory, I need to listen to her back, remember? So the first one that I wanna do is actually just go ahead and get the anterior part out of the way. Ms. Shapiro, I'm gonna listen to your lungs now. And I listen for a full cycle, one or two, at least just to make sure that I hear the inspiration and the expiration. And I'm looking into especially that I mentioned that she has some history of asthma. I want to make sure that there is no wheezing in there. Okay. And because of that, then I want to come now down into the side to make sure that I don't hear any wheezing as well. So I come down in here. You see how I accommodated for the patient's history, how I'll perform this assessment. And then I am going to turn her. Mrs. Shapiro, we're going to turn you over on your side. You're going to turn towards me. To make sure you provide privacy. You're gonna use the draw sheet as we were taught in 1115. And we're gonna turn her over. Okay, I have you, Mrs. Shapiro. Miss Faye's gonna hold her nice and tight in there. And then I'm gonna listen. Upper airways, inspiration and expiration, upper lobes. On the right, I'll do the middle. Inspiration and expiration, and the lower lobe. The same, and on the left side, I'm going to do the inspiration and expiration on the lower lobe. At the same time, I want to go ahead and look at her skin because I already have her in this position. I want to look for any redness, any opening of the skin, and I don't see anything, so we'll turn her back on her back. Back on your back, Mrs. Shapiro. And that concludes her um, respiratory assessment. I make sure that um, she has pulse ox, so I'm going to look at the numbers, okay? And we're gonna look at respiratory rate and heart rate and blood pressure. We check all of those as we do the assessment. And the next step is going to be cardiovascular. Ms. Shapira, I'm going to listen to your heart now in different ways. I'm gonna palpate your chest to make sure that I find the right anatomical place. This is your aortic and I listen for S1, S2, right across from that, second in the costal space, left sternal border, first pulmonic, third, second pulmonic, fourth, that will be your tricuspid and then make clavicular, fifth in a costal space, right under the nipple, then you listen for a full minute.
I want to make a distinction in here when you're listening to hard sounds, especially apical pulse, and you're listening for a full minute. You probably will hear that you hear for 15 seconds and you multiply by four, or you hear for 30 seconds and you multiply by two. When it comes to apical pulse, however, especially with the population we're going to be exposed in acute care, is that um, the heart rate can fluctuate. Some of them can be regularly irregular, and unless you actually listen for a full minute, you're not going to be able to identify that. Now, once you had obtained that whole minute in there, when you're checking your radio pulses, then you don't need to count or wait for a full minute because you already got the apical pulse. This is the mo most accurate. And at the same time, if you have a client that is connected to a monitor, you'll be able to compare what you heard or what's showing up in here. And you'll be able to see the different patterns. And in lab, when we talk about EKGs, we'll talk about that. But for the purpose of the assessment, you want to make sure that you listen for a full minute in the apical pulse. Now, Ms. Shapiro, I'm going to go ahead and, and check your pulses in your, in your hands. We're looking at the radio. and we'll make sure that we check both at the same time, and we're looking for equality. We're looking for both of them to be the same. Then you're looking at the capillary refill, and you're looking at the color and the temperature. At the same time, you want to ask your client to squeeze their hands because remember she had a stroke and it was the right side, correct? So you will expect the left to be lift, lift up when you ask her and the right will remain the same, okay? The next one, then you're coming down and check her feet. Now, if you notice that I am right here, so because I'm working with the client on the side, the rail is down, but I am very aware of that. So you want to make sure that you keep patient safety. You're looking at both of her feet. You're checking for the dorsalis pedis, which is right here, right on top. It's going to be slightly different in each client, so you want to make sure that you keep on palpating until you actually find the pulse, and then you feel it for a little bit. Then come back into the, dorsal, the posterior tibialis, and you're going to do the same thing. The point will be that both of them will be the same, okay? And you check both of them at the same time. You check for edema, color, temperature, and capillary refill on the toenails, okay? You cover her back up. Now I'm going to listen to your bell, Ms. Shapiro. In here, you want to make sure that you provide privacy, that the door is closed. You're going to expose their belly. Look for any discoloration, any scarring, any uh, bruising, any um, distension, and then you're going to listen all four quadrants. And make sure that you hear it. You keep the stethoscope in there as long as it takes until you hear it. That's going to help you determine which level is it. Is it normal, hypoactive, or hyperactive? And again, because she's unable to speak, then we will want to make sure that we go into the assessments and assessment sheets and we look at the information. When it comes to GU, she will have a diaper on. I will just open that diaper on and look around, look at the color of the urine, if there's any in there, and talk to the CNA about what information she can give me about the patient's um, urine. So basically, this is how you perform an assessment on an acute care patient. Again, you want to make sure that you pay attention to the medical history and the chief complaint where I brought them to the hospital so you can concentrate more on those areas to look for more data. And when you come in and the client tells you any complaint, that you take care of that first before you finish up your assessment. So basically, that's how you do a patient assessment on an acute care.